What's up, you guys? Blue Blazer here with a very important Street Fighter 4 video. In fighting games, matchups are very important. Your understanding of a matchup, whether it be a good matchup or a bad matchup, is integral to your success in a match. There are often a lot of characters in fighting games, which means a lot of matchups to learn, and depending on the character you play, you could be up against some bad matchups. But what matchups are the worst? Let's take a quick look at a couple of notably bad matchups in the Street Fighter 4 series before we come up to the main matchup of the video. Yun vs. Dalsim. Since Arcade Edition released in 2011, Dalsim players have dreaded fighting against Yun. Yun counters every single aspect of what can make Dalsim a strong character. His dive kick shuts down long range poking with ease, he has shoulder to deal with fireballs and to apply pressure easily, and because Yun has always struggled so hard to get in, he's got that handy EX dash punch to boot. All that combined with Dalsim's low health and stun, and you have a pretty grim matchup. One of the worst. Everything's very good. All the movement placement of their block strings. Not a lot of random boost stuff here yet. Man, he's getting these combos. Oh, oh this matchup is just like. Oh, and that does so much damage too. Oh, good block. You know what? Guile vs M. Bison. This is truly a bad matchup since the dawn of Street Fighter 4. Bison excels in constant up close pressure. Guile excels in keep out. What makes this matchup particularly bad are three things. The extremely quick recovery on Sonic Boom, Bison's tall and long jump arc, and a combination of Bison's low damage and low stun, both output and his own low stun. Bison really struggles to deal with Sonic Boom, more so than a lot of characters in the game due to his jump arc. He has EX Scissor Kick, but you really have to be anticipating and reacting while making sure that you have a charge. And that's when the issue of low damage comes in. You don't really get much. You can do one short short Scissor Kick afterwards, but then if Guile presses Fierce, there's a pretty good chance you're trading or getting beaten straight up. Then it's back to square one. Brutal. T-Hawk vs Yang. I've been on the winning side of this matchup many times myself as a Hawk player. T-Hawk completely nullifies Yang at all angles. Thrust Peak destroys dive kicks, Hawk's normals are all very good at countering Yang's, and if you get a single light punch command grab, the round is over. Yang on the other hand has to hit you about a hundred times to almost kill you and then still be one mistake away from dying. Miss space to slash, command grab. Did the wrong normal, command grab. Try to get out of a mix up, command grab. It's just complete and total decimation in this matchup. This is one of those matchups you can play with Reckless Abandon as T-Hawk and still come out on top easily. That brings us to the main topic of today's video, T-Hawk vs Blanca. A matchup that for years and years I would hear people at tournaments say this is the worst matchup in the game, or this is an A2 matchup. This continued for the entirety of Super Street Fighter 4, Arcade Edition, AE 2012, and Ultra Street Fighter 4. People always said the same thing, and I can understand why. The T-Hawk players that most people saw at tournaments were Koji Kog and Native Impact. Both are very good players, but I think they both would agree that they don't play the Blanca matchup very well. And on top of that, Blanca vs T-Hawk actually used to be really bad. Not quite an 8-2, but it was definitely 7-3 back in Super. But things have changed over the years with different versions of the game, and as of Ultra Street Fighter 4, Blanca vs T-Hawk is not nearly as bad as it used to be. I would still give Blanca the advantage for sure, but it's not as bad as it was. So why does everybody still think it's a terrible matchup? First, let's take a look at what makes a bad matchup really bad. In all of the examples of bad matchups in Street Fighter 4 that I provided earlier in the video, there was one constant across all the matchups despite there being a few different types of characters involved. One character's options either completely negate the other character's options, or they make it extremely difficult for the character on the losing side to execute their game plan effectively. When you take away all of a character's options but one or two, and then you continue to shut down those few options, it turns bad really fast. Some players, however, are able to come up with a different type of strategy to deal with a bad matchup. Deviate from their normal strategy, but counter with a strategy that's equally as strong, focusing on different aspects of the matchup. This can make a bad matchup winnable, but with the examples provided, that's not as easy as it sounds. It's a total shutdown. Let's take a closer look at both T-Hawk and Blanca and their strengths and weaknesses so we can be a bit more familiar before getting into matchup specifics. We'll start with the character I'm most familiar with, T-Hawk. T-Hawk excels at getting in close and making a guess. If he lands a light punch Mexican Typhoon, it is going to be a world of hurt. Either a 50-50 or depending on your character and unblockable will be coming for huge damage right into another mix-up. Hawk can use standing light punch to easily hit confirm into close standing medium punch into a combo or block confirm into further pressure. His great set of normals and half decent walk speed allow you to shut down your opponent's footsie game and continue to close the gap. EX Spire can be used to get in on characters zoning you with fireballs and with clever use of option selects the offense can be relentless. 
He also has an excellent anti-air game, having one of the best uppercuts in the game with Heavy Tomahawk Buster, and Standing Medium Punch, Crouching Heavy Punch, and Thrust Peak for all different contextual jumping situations. With Raging Slash finally getting buffed in Ultra, Hawk finally has two usable Ultra combos as well. This of course means that characters with strong defensive options and good keepout will generally do well against him. He struggles against many charge characters as well as keepout centric characters like Sagat and Chun-Li. Hawk can also run into problems being rushed down if he's caught without meter. While Mexican Typhoon is a fast reversal, it's not invincible and mashing can lead to an even worse situation. All of this combined makes Hawk a pretty formidable character in Ultra. He beats some characters pretty bad, loses to some pretty bad, and then does pretty well against the rest. Now let's look at Blanca. Blanca is a trickster in Ultra Street Fighter 4. He can move around the screen quickly and cross you up with Beast Hop, and if you aren't familiar with his offensive capabilities, he can overwhelm you quickly with plus on block lightning pressure and devastating mix-ups on knockdown. On top of this, Blanca also has a decent, although a bit unorthodox, neutral game. He can use Standing Heavy Punch, Crouching Heavy Punch, Crouching Medium Punch, and Standing Medium Punch to effectively control space in front of him while catching the opponent off guard with an occasional slide or Blanca Ball to start the offense. Good anti-airs in Crouching Medium Punch, Crouching Heavy Punch, and Standing Heavy Kick easily deal with jump happy opponents. Blanca also has a strong defensive game he can play, annoying the opponent with his plethora of movement options and reversal options to escape situations. Both Ultra combos are effective in different matchups as well. While all of this seems really good, Blanca is held back by stubby normals, low damage, and being highly charge reliant. While it's arguable that being charge reliant is a weakness when playing at the highest level, it does make for awkward execution when doing constant cross-ups into mix-ups into optimal damage, all involving charge moves. Due to the system changes in Ultra, Blanca did get a big buff in the damage department, however. When he has three bars, red focus cancel becomes a real threat from cross up, crouch medium kick and up ball, or even crouching fierce into red focus cancel at neutral. While it's strong and can create explosive moments, it does require three quarters of a full bar to do, so it's not always a threat. So why have people always said it's nearly the worst matchup in the game? Said, uh, I'm sorry, native, but uh, this is one of those tough ones. Blanca versus T-Hawk. Just, just a tough matchup all around, you know. So this is one of the reasons why this fight is going to be hard for T-Hawk. Right. It? That Blanca ball is very good, and there's really nothing T-Hawk can do to punish it. A lot of characters can punish it on block, but T-Hawk not one of them. Right, you're right. And then that up ball. Yeah. People have described Hawk vs. Blanca this way since Super launched, and it was actually pretty true when Super came out. Hawk was a really bad character, easily bottom five. And while Blanca wasn't great by any means, he had some abusable moves against Hawk in particular. The main one that always gets focused on is that Hawk can't punish Blanca Ball on block. This was true until Arcade Edition when it got changed so that every character could punish heavy Blanca Ball, but some versions of the move remained unpunishable. Another aspect of the matchup that was tough was doing mix-ups on Blanca. Blanca's EX Up Ball and EX Rainbow Ball made it even more free in the eyes of the SF4 masses. EX Up Ball was a 4 frame reversal that was easy to autocorrect, nullifying Hawk's core mix up game of Typhoon into 50 50. And EX Rainbow Ball is another move that a lot of people struggled to deal with, as it had a little invincibility, and Blanca would hop back a little bit before becoming totally controllable, going wherever the little demon Blanca player would like him to go. These are the main things that made people think Blanca vs. T-Hawk was a possible A2 matchup. So in the words of an old friend, what changed with Ultra? T-Hawk received significant buffs in Ultra Street Fighter 4. On the screen is the list of changes he received in Ultra. Light Punch Condor Spire eventually got changed to being 15 frame startup, and Medium Punch Uppercut had a strange change as well. Let's talk about the ones that are significant in this matchup in particular. Walk speed, crouching medium kick, spire buff and input change, tomahawk buster's increase in speed, raging slash input change, and less helpful but still helpful is the close standing medium punch buff. Walk speed is obvious. T-Hawk was painfully slow for his entire Street Fighter 4 existence up until Ultra. The walk speed buff was huge in a ton of matchups including the block matchup. Crouching medium kick being cancelable is helpful for more pressure and just interesting combos. The spire buff is huge, especially the input of the move. It made no sense before. You had to do a reverse uppercut motion plus a punch button to do a move that would advance you forward while you're trying to counter fireballs. 
So you'd be walking forward trying to react to a fireball or another type of whiff move, and you would sometimes get an uppercut or a command grab because of how Street Fighter IV's input system works. The Raging Slash buff is similar, great buff. Close standing medium punch gives you some more damaging combos, which is nice as well. But the real sleeper out of this list is the Light Punch Tomahawk Buster, startup reduced to 4 frames from 5 frames. This may not seem huge, but let me show you something. So back in Arcade Edition, Blanca Ball got nerfed so Hawk could punish Heavy Ball. That made Blanca players turn to using a lot of medium and light Blanca Ball against Hawk, as those versions were still unpunishable. Sure, they had less range and speed, but you could still sit at a fairly safe distance on the screen and just throw out these balls. The most I would see Hawk players try to do is jab him out of it, which can lead to a pretty bad trade for T-Hawk. Another good option was to EX Uppercut. It cost a bar, but if you had reactions, it's pretty easy to do. Light Punch Uppercut was an okay option as well, but it would often trade due to its lack of invincibility. The change from 5 frames to 4 frames allowed you to, again if you had reactions, beat Light Punch and Medium Punch Ball very clean. This is a literal matchup changer. Let's go back to something I said earlier in the video. Some players, however, are able to come up with a different type of strategy to deal with a bad matchup. Deviate from their normal strategy, but counter with a strategy that's equally as strong, focusing on different aspects of the matchup. This is something that's importance can't be understated in Street Fighter. While each character has an optimal way that they operate, sometimes you come up against an obstacle in the form of a character that shuts down that optimal strategy. This is when you have to think outside of the box and create a strategy that may not be a checkmate, but it can create enough advantageous situations in a match to create a checkmate. Normally with Hawk you want to get in and start running mix-ups, that's the bread and butter. But Blanca's control of the screen, both vertical and horizontal when he's crouching, makes that very difficult. If you try to move forward on the ground, he Blanca balls you. If you jump, he up balls you. But with the change of light Tomahawk Buster going from 5 frames to 4 frames, this opens up an option for you to consistently beat Blanca Ball on the ground as long as you are very tuned into the neutral game. At round start, almost all Blanca players will Blanca Ball you. It's tough to react at round start, so you block. Then you wait for the second one and you uppercut it. And then you uppercut it again. That's almost 300 damage out of 1000 life on Blanca. And now, he has to advance on you to gain an advantage. Patience is crucial in this matchup. This gives you the opportunity to anti or jump ins or beat his buttons on the ground with crouching medium kick. If he gets too close, you can even get him with a Mexican Typhoon. But Blue Blazer, didn't you say Blanca's wig up options make it hard for him to run mix ups after Mexican Typhoon? Well, yes, I did. Which is why in this matchup, you only use medium Typhoon if it's not going to kill, or heavy Typhoon if it is going to kill. Why is that? Well, off of medium Typhoon, you can manually time a 4 frame safe jump. As soon as you see Hawk's foot take one step forward after you land, jump forward and do splash. If he up balls, you block. If he does EX Rainbow Ball, you can react with standing medium punch to knock him out of the air and put him back onto the ground. The goal is to decrease the amount of options the Blanca player feels comfortable doing, allowing you to transition into building a stronger offense. As I said earlier, patience is crucial. I've played matches against Blanca players where I literally didn't press anything for 20-30 seconds. I just sat about two thirds of the screen away waiting. This is a strategy I came up with over the years when I was playing competitive Street Fighter 4. While the matchup is still slightly in Blanca's favor, it is much better than being an A2 matchup, and far from being the worst matchup in the game. It requires time and effort doing the lab work, but it's all worth it if you really want to win with your character. This idea doesn't just apply to T-Hawk, but all characters. This is often when misconceptions about matchups come about, when people don't try to figure something out and just parrot whatever they heard someone say on SRK. Okay, old reference. Some of you are probably thinking at this point, okay, that's all fine and good, but who are you to be making such definitive statements about matchups in Street Fighter 4? Well, I've played the game since it came out, I played Hawk since day one in Super, and I played the game at a pretty high level at the end of its competitive life cycle. The biggest tournament I won was Rumble in the Tundra 4 in Buffalo, which had around 90 entrants. In the grand finals, I beat notable Blanca player Ricita, most famous for beating Daigo at Canada Cup, which means, by Rebello logic, that I'm actually an EVO champion. I also got 5th place at Toryuken 4, and I got 25th at a number of US majors over the years, which isn't anything special. I played all of the notable North American Blanca players in offline matches in the last year of the game. Ricita I lost to at Con Bravo in 2014 in tournament. He picked Honda because I beat his Blanca in a money match before the tournament. Then I beat him at Rumble in Tundra 4. I beat Coach Steve in a money match at Rumble in Tundra 5 where he actually ended up switching to Rolento halfway through our set. And then I finally played Casablanca at Canada Cup in 2015. My match against Casablanca I actually considered to be one of my greatest Street Fighter 4 matches I've ever played. It, like many great matches of that era, was played at 2am in a hotel room with two other witnesses. 
Ricky Ortiz and Brent Schools stood behind us as we played in a first of five. He ended up beating me 5-3, but it was an incredible set filled with amazing moments. I wish it was recorded, but the memory of it will always live on for me, and my respect for Casablanca as a Street Fighter player is just huge. I contacted them all for a response about our history playing each other and what their thoughts are on the matchup. Here's what they said. So while I am just a random guy on the internet talking about Street Fighter 4, it does come from years of experience playing the game at a high level. With that being said, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the thumbs up too as it really helps with visibility. And with Street Fighter 6 coming out, just keep some of the things I said in this video in mind, you know? If you see something on Twitter, don't always just believe it right away. You know, go into training mode, recreate it, see if it's real, make your own mix-ups, You'll be surprised at what you can learn on your own. But yeah, have a good day, everybody. Peace. I'm begging you, bro. Don't do it.